Like the call this being the order, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Cazzarelli. Here. Graziano. Here. Notori. Here. Stribula Burke. Here. Here. Mayor Melman. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to be going into executive session. Motion for that. Make a motion. Second. Second. And we're going into executive session to discuss personnel, library settlement discussion, energy aggregation, uh, auction price, and a capital program, lease program on behalf of the Board of Education. We have a motion. We have a second. Or call roll. Councilmember Cosarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notori. Yes. Strubel Burke. Yes. Mayor Melman. Yes. Unfortunately, we do have to clear the room. We will invite you back. When executive session is over, no action will be taken while we're in executive. Okay, so you have all walked back into our public meeting. This is now the caucus portion of our meeting. This is basically a work session. You're going to hear various council members discuss various things. Unfortunately, there is no public participation during this portion. You will have the opportunity uh, later on in the meeting to speak uh, for any specific interest that you may or may not have. Uh, but unfortunately, you're going to basically hear us just discuss some various items a little awkward that we're doing that with an audience here watching us, but that's that's the whole point, I guess. Uh, so just bear with us as we get through our caucus meeting items. We're going to try and go as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The first thing I have here uh, is an item that kind of was carried over from when we voted on the zoning ordinance, uh, I believe, a month ago. Some council members either voted no or abstained or had some questions about that. So do we have, I do not see CME here. She's not here. Please come now. We're just in a meeting with her. I wasn't so clear that she was coming. No? Okay, so we're going to do this. Um, we did vote and uh, change our zoning ordinance about a month ago. Uh, like I said. So I was to you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Sir? My name is Michael Bennett. I live at 364 Dewitt Avenue in Belleville. <coughs> I've lived there for the past 37 years. Good evening, Mayor Mellon and the council members. While I'm all for new businesses coming into Belleville, I am here to speak about the new bar on Union Avenue, the Whiskey Priest. A search of the name Whiskey Priest brings the following definition. Whiskey Priest is a priest or ordained minister who shows clear signs of moral weakness, while at the same time teaching a higher standard. A whiskey priest's shortcomings may include many vices, but usually include alcoholism. There have already been negative comments posted referring to the sacraments and rituals of the Catholic Church. Mayor Melham, I ask that you and other members of the town council, especially council member John Natari, whose district the whiskey priest is in. Actually, Mike, I have to interrupt you for one minute. I do agree with you on the title of the uh, name of the place. I do agree with you 100%, but that is the second ward. Oh, okay. It's, yeah. it's confusing. <laughs> and the following block is fourth ward. <coughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Well, the council member who's award that does. <laughs> Steve yeah, he's, he's, behind he's behind the computer. <laughs> yeah, he's behind the computer. <laughs> uh, I would appreciate it if you would meet with the owner of the Whiskey Priest and ask that he consider another name for his bar before the opening. A name that would not be as offensive to religious groups and their priests and ordained ministers. Thank you for allowing me to address the council. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate, appreciate your comments. I, I never thought of it that way. Um, but, and we don't really have control, as you can imagine. We don't really have control over that. Uh, but it's something that we can mention. And I appreciate your comments. Fucci. Victor Mafucci, 61 Continental. As you all know, the last few months, every meeting I've been complaining about my co-op sewer industry, which has finally been corrected. Ah. So I wish to thank two Mayor comments Council. and three speakers. So two two compliments and three speakers so far. <laughs> this uh, is good. Mayor Council, Tom Hurts, and the manager. Excellent job they did. Uh, when they 
first started was that scorching hot Saturday several weeks ago. And the guy that was down there, the old shore was brick. So I had to remove all the bricks and then dig out a lot of the dirt. That was all done on that Saturday uh, for half day. They came back the following Tuesday, put in the new uh, well, now it's cement block work, and filled in the uh, hole and paved it. So it was an excellent job. Thank, Thank you. you. Even though it took no, 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 stay positive now. Even though it took almost two years to do it. I wasn't here. So I think, I know. It only took us a year, so. Yeah. It took manager I going a month, so. That's it. As far as the transportation committee goes, our police do do a background check on the individual drivers. Also, it has to approve the vehicles themselves. One other need more members. The last three meetings have been canceled because we did not have a quorum. So we're short members on it. Regardless of where the responsibility sure. was. Uh, when they replace the light bulbs with the LED, what do they going to do with the old ones? They take them. They take them. Okay. It's, all, it's, all, it's all included in the program. Okay. Uh, I never received the new letter slash uh, calendar in the mail. I only knew about it when somebody mentioned the mistake and I said, what are you talking about? And they showed me. Uh, does it say the dates when we will not have a garbage pickup? It does. And those are correct. Okay. It's, it's only four days out of the year. Well, I'm on Monday, so a lot of times. Yeah. It's me. But a lot of holidays we do pick up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Some of the things that Mr. Graziano was talking about, I think you can get a list from code enforcement of what has to happen. Like if you have three steps, you have to have the railing, that type of stuff. That would help some of the homeowners. I believe they have a list to help them. Um, and I can't read the wrong one. Oh, you said check with the tax office. That is not always correct, which is why a lot of times you'll have for the boards, because they may be taxed as a three family, but legally in code enforcement there are only two. So you really should check both, both places. No, I, my, my point was I believe the data should be merged. We should have one mm -hmm. we should have one decision. We shouldn't have different departments mm -hmm. viewing a piece of property as different things. That happened to me. The house I grew up in, I've been paying for taxes for a three family forever. Mm -hmm. And we found out one day it was only two. We had to go to the zoning board and get a variance. Thank you once again for the two here. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear up yet. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, my name is Cesar Valdivia. I live on 76 Little Street. This is my first time here. Um, I'm a food truck owner, but I'm a truck. I was here outside for the program flag. Oh, sure. And I had a lot of positive feedback. I went to high school there. And I have a lot of people there sending me messages. Asked me if I could bring my truck to Belleville, but according to your ordinance, you don't allow food trucks at the moment. Um, I'm trying to see if you guys would reconsider or amend that ordinance. Look into it. Uh, food trucks are going to be trendy now. They're going on the East Coast. They've been revenue to bring help, bring the community together. It's just a restaurant on bills. Mm -hmm. So, that was I gave. I we, well, how does that work? Would it be a permanent? Location, or you would? Um, I said to Jackie the ordinance of the town where I'm working out of now. Which town is that? I'm out of Patterson. Um, I have you guys come to yeah. look at it, mimic it, adjust it how you want. Every town allows them, or they don't, they create their own restrictions. So how's it work in Patterson? You go to the same spot every day? You can move around, you're not allowed. But you, you particularly, what is it that I, you do? Can, I stay on two streets because I build my brand there, people know where I'm at. But I have the liberty to move, I can't park in a residential area. I can't park in front of, let's say, an establishment that has a food license, a pizza or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. I can park across the street, I can park next door, and um, they allow you to take the meter. So if you have streets in Baltimore, they allow meter parking, they allow me to pay for it. You buy the meter for the day. Meter, yeah. for the day. Mm -hmm. I can pay for it for the whole month, and put on a parking sign, mm -hmm. and that parking is for me.
what kind of business this is. Like there's cars inside of there, there's mattresses, uh, refrigerators, bicycles. Just about every other day a trailer comes and brings some kind of uh, whatever in there. Um, there was an issue with their garbage. They were just setting out garbage bags out on the street and apparently not uh, garbage night to the point where the bags were breaking and normally my mother would be out policing the area but now she's a little bit older and she can't so somehow tag I'm in and I don't appreciate that so I went and I told them you know look could you move your bags or whatever uh, I noticed now they have a sign on their door ten dollars a day for parking I want to know since we're having such a problem with parking where are they parking these cars? Are they going to be inside of their warehouse? or? And since they've came, that's when the parking problem has escalated because the restaurant used to park the cars there, I guess, to get more, uh, have more spots. And so when this company came or whatever, they started parking their cars there. So that's when things kind of snowballed and everything kind of moved around a little bit. Um, Cars are still being parked on Quinton Street and left for days, you know. We had a car that was parked there that had no door and had plastic on it that was there for but just what, about... So what happened when you called the police department on that? I called the police. That was a late on a Sunday and I could look at my phone and tell you what time. The car, I went out, the car disappeared for that day, but it was back on Cleveland Street, I believe, that Tuesday. So. It just went from one place to the other, which is still taking up a parking space, you know, as far as uh, the restaurant or the residence or whatever. Um, I'm also, there's a house, 11 Quinn Street, which I don't know, there's been people coming in and out with suitcases, and the reason I know is because they are also parking on Quinn Street too, and I see them going to 11 Cleveland Street. They only seem to be there for a couple of days now. It could be family or whatever, but it's different family members, and it's quite a few, uh, how does it, different people coming like every week. So, which again is impacting us on Quentin Street because they, of course, they can't get a spot on Cleveland Street to park, which puts them up on Quentin Street and reduces parking for us. Um, also, people, rest, customers coming to the restaurant, there was, uh, I guess, a slight altercation, so to speak, where two people were trying to get said space. Now, they're going to the restaurant trying to get a space. What about the people that live there? We can't get a space, you know? So they're fighting to park on our street when the people that live there can't even park. Um, People are driving up. I have to keep looking at the end of the street to see is there, in fact, a dead end street sign here because people are coming up on the street. There's a large red big building at the end of the street that you can clearly see. But yet people come zooming up on the street now at the height of any given day. It doesn't, need, it, in fact, Monday it was crowded. There's no room to turn around. There's nine houses and four of them have driveways. So, it's getting, it gets a little tight there, so it's hard for people to maneuver if they're not familiar with it. So if somebody's up at the end of the street trying to turn around, another car comes up, so then they have to back down because it's just a mess there. Um, there's a, I'd like to know there's a, a, a lot on the corner. I'd like to know who that belongs to and how can we maybe... I would even go to the restaurant myself and persuade them to buy this property, level it off, and it would be parking, and we might not have as much trouble as we do. Again, I'm still trying to uh, ask if we can have permit parking on the street because, again, parking is from 12 o'clock till 12 midnight. If you're not home, people that come to work when they come home, I myself have a part-time job. I work from 4 to 8. When I come home, there's no place to park, so I have to wait until 8 o'clock to get in. It, it's really getting to be a little bit much, so I'm asking again, 
if we can have permit parking, some kind of, we don't, well, we do need it overnight because, like I said, we have people coming and leaving their cars for days. And but those, I, like, those are the issues that we need you to communicate to our police department. Because coming to our council meeting once a month and telling us about cars that have been left there. I'm for the, calling, you know, but. So do they not respond? Like, I, I want to drill they, down they so do I can respond, find out. But I try, you know, like my son says, do you have a parking space? If I have a parking space, then I don't call. But the cars are still there, so I might have a space, but if I go out, then I no, don't have would, a space. Would, so I mean, I, I guess what I'm asking is, what would you like us to do to address that? Again, I keep asking, can't we have permit parking? Our police parking? department will not issue permit parking Why in, not? In, the, inside the municipality. And when I say that, and, and we've had this conversation every time you come, we do permit I'm not parking on on streets that border other, like Nutley. So Nutley has permit parking there, where, I'm sorry, Nutley has no street parking there. So we find that then people that live in Nutley will park on our Belleville streets. So our police department's policy has always been, if you border a town like Nutley that's got no street parking, for, and we have them, we have permit parking for those reasons. But if we started giving permit parking to every single street where people think the street's crowded, the whole town will be permit parking. And I, and I understand. I, I live on a street where there's a lot of cars. The guy four houses down from me has got six cars. No, I get it. Problem too. And it's like frustrating. One house has 11 cars. There's 10 houses, nine houses on the street. He has more cars than houses and the largest driveway and doesn't use it. Right. And I've had words with him several times. But if people are coming <clears throat> and the valet guys are still parking the cars on the street, it's not fair. There has to be. What, what are we supposed to do? I can't keep calling the police every time there's a, a customer coming to the restaurant saying I can't get a parking space. We can have the police department, traffic department, look at it again. I know they that, did and, look at and it. And I know they, they looked at it. They came for one weekend and they gave out tickets hot and heavy. Well, I watched they, them right. and they haven't been back since. They gave out tickets for illegal parking. They also ran a lot of plates and they found out that those people live there. So they have, I mean, I... I I wish I could create more parking for the entire town, but you they ran plates, we have the statistics, we have the reports, those people live there. I would like to know when they ran those plates, because you cannot make me believe that the plates that they ran, those people were at the restaurant with Belleville residents. I know, I talked to the people, I asked them, because we won't, we won't about the person that I am, I was like, excuse me, where do you live, are you just coming to the restaurant, you know, do you live in Belleville? Mm -hmm. And no, they're coming from out of town. Our chief is not here today, but our deputy chief is here, and I, I will ask the, the town manager to try and coordinate with the police and traffic department again, the chief, you, you've heard. Uh, we've been constant conversation. Well, you know, we do concentrate on an area. It's never just for a weekend. We do what's called a patrol lookout. At minimum, it's always two weeks. So it's not just three days. I, I issue them. So I'm telling you right now, when we do a lookout, it's a minimum of two weeks. And I'll talk to Lieutenant Pickett and Harry tomorrow. I, I don't have the to report to you, but I probably have them like that. So the rest I'll just keep calling. Okay. That's what we're here for. You can call every day if you have I've been calling every day, That's our 24 job. hours a day. That's our job. If you call, we'll adjust the calls. Anybody? Sir? I was just wondering, um, oh, uh, Scott Higgins, uh, Maple Avenue. Uh, last, last month, the Legion Act was passed into law recognizing 12 more wars than our veterans, that there are veterans from. I was wondering if the town is going to extend uh, the $250 uh, tax break to those uh, veterans as well. Because I know the town has certain dates too, just like a lot of places do. I was just wondering if the town is going to offer that to those veterans of those 12 additional wars that were actually signed into uh, law. I, that's very interesting. I, I, I'm going to double check, but I'm going to give you my talk to the assessor. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you With or without that. <laughs> I think that comes from the state. That, that, I think that's regulated by the state, but I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, but the state, the state legislator passed it, acknowledged it. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's signed into right, law. We'll, we'll look into it. That's about the president it. signed it into law. Okay. I was just wondering if the town is going to extend, you know, the, that. If we have the power to do that, so, that, I'm sure. That $250 do deduction. Because yeah. you never know, it might help, you know. It doesn't okay. hurt. Very valid. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, can you make a note to one of the All right. <coughs>
took away one of your items now, Mario, so now you got five minutes to listen to me. About five minutes. I don't need to be five minutes. All right. Okay. Um, an issue that we discussed last time. You, you told me to. Uh, the agenda? I should, the agenda no, sure. no I, I'm happy with that one. I discussed about the mayor making the appointments to the, uh, the planning board. I researched it, and I am correct. You have no right to appoint. Every council member for history in this town has always had an appointment. And you are, you are citing a 1975 policing form of government law, which I researched all over again. So you do not get that pick. And it was revised. That 1975 commission law ended either June or, no, July or August of 1990 when the council manager form of government came into effect. So you, all of our orders passed in the commission of government? No, no. The, under, anything oh. that pertains to the commission form of government, especially in planning, that ceased to exist in 1990. Look, I'm the one that initiated the change of government in, in 1988, 1989. I think I'm quite familiar with the law. So all I'm saying is, look, if you made a mistake, that's fine by me. You made a mistake. But every council member, because if you look at the nice at a round table, if you remember, every council member is equal up there. But all of you should have equal that, right? appointments. You know but you do that. not get all the five does appointments. Not say that. You do not get five appointments. Thank you for your Third, Well, I'm not done yet. Okay. Oh, You're you all equal up there. Remember that. No one has more power than the other. That's one thing. And no, the other one thing more power, is, no one had more power than the other of the commission for government either. It was, let's not get into government. We're talking about an oh. issue here. Let's not oh, change the subject. Okay, let's not change the subject. I didn't change now, the subject. Also, based on what I heard, that there was a possibility. I'm just, if you listen to the tape, that there was a possibility that something was changed on the internet. I don't think your firm should be doing any of the town. Uh, website anymore. That should be given to someone or just contract, let somebody well, we bid on it and now like that. We used to pay $17,500 for a ridiculously substandard website. Know, like one time it was $12,000. Which, which the crazy. four years that I'll be here means that I'm going to save us $65,000. I know, but yeah. you know what? You're, you're going to save the money. Well, you know what? You hire less people and there's the money. They were just too high reads done in the last couple of weeks, which is <laughs> according to the uh, to the code, the manager is supposed to dispose of any new people who are hired or fired, and I didn't hear that in the last two Did meetings. Did you hear about the four retirees that we had? That's okay, but you, oh. it should have been here. It should have been. Okay. It doesn't make a difference. No. It should be here. So the manager is supposed to be given a report, because i got all the state statutes right here. Okay. So what are we going to do about this, the mayor's appointment? The council has some input into this. I mean, you can't just sit up there and allow the mayor to tell you what to do. That's what I see for you. Thank you for your opinion again, all right? That's my opinion. Okay. Well, Mr. Manager. You should need your five minutes, so you, you're good? I'm good. Thank well, you. Lennon, again, again, you are incorrect. I'm going to put that on record. You are noted. Thank you. Yeah? Hi, I'm Lenny Munez, 49 Lake Street. Um, I just have a quick question back on the water again. I live in Silver Lake, so I'm very concerned over it. Um, definitely helped hearing everybody out with it, but uh, for the school, um, you said they, um, it's the homeowner's job to change those pipes. Mm -hmm. So do we know if those school pipes have been already changed, or is that something that will be changed? Or It's my opinion that uh, our schools do not have lead service lines. I know for a fact that when we had this issue one time, they were, we were told the water fountains did not, and that would lead you to believe that the water coming did not. I don't know if we have our... Do we have our... They're changed also. They're changed also. They're changed. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sir. No, bad, Mike. Get first. Good evening. Michael Sheldon, 47 Flag Street. I have a bunch of uh, quick items, so we go through them as, as quickly as possible. Uh, firstly, uh, I'm glad to hear from Mr. Graziano that you're moving ever closer to using board docs. One request is when you do switch over, you do some sort of archival procedure, so at least include everything since July 1st of last year for research purposes that would be helpful and appreciated. Uh, I'm glad to hear from the town manager that we have a grant for $15,000 for LED lights. Uh, I had asked several months ago about the lighting in this room. Some people laughed at me, but you know, I look at these lights. These look like incandescent bulbs to me. These do not look like LED. I switched in my house. I had these types of lights. I switched over to LED. The light kits are very different. These look like regular uh, incandescent bulbs. Uh, I, I don't really like the light here. I don't know if you have, 
we find this acceptable, but this looks more like a, a restaurant lighting atmosphere than it does a, a government building or an office complex. So if you can look into this, Mr. Arcona, to see if when you get the light, the guy to do the lights, if these can be upgraded to make sure that these are LED. Uh, they are. Uh, well, all right, well, I'll take your word for it, but Mr. Mapucci part of the Transportation Committee. Um, I've been on that committee for 10 years. I'm the acting chair right now since Mr. G. Andrew Russo resigned last year. Uh, this is one of the few exceptions, uh, Mr. Mellon, where I'm going to agree with you. I really truthfully believe that we could probably forego the Transportation Committee. The reason we haven't had many meetings in recent times is because, as Mr. Mapucci pointed out, we haven't had enough members for a quorum. Like the last three months, we had to, to cancel things after showing up, four of us, we couldn't do anything because we didn't have enough members. And there are some people in this township who are driving taxis or limos whose livelihoods depend upon us approving their, their applications who aren't able to do their jobs. But with the rise of Uber and Lyft, we have an ever dwindling number of people seeking taxi and limo licenses. So I think we probably could safely move this into some other aspect of the town hall operations and forego the transportation committee. Questions about items 15 and 16 on the consent agenda. You uh, have you know, emergency resolutions to extend the 2019 temporary budget. Can we safely assume here that this means that you still don't have an officially approved budget for 2019? I think we just scheduled our, okay. I think we just scheduled our public hearing. So it actually is too, uh, on, we're gonna announce and, and a good reminder. August 29th, I think at 6 o'clock, I think we got a quorum. We have to have a public uh, hearing on the amendment of the uh, initial budget. And then the next scheduled meeting, which is September 10th, we will be adopting the budget. So we've been, we're just waiting for one more piece of information from the Department of Community Affairs. Uh, but we wanted to make sure, we had to have 10 days from the amendment to the adoption. So. We're scheduled for the 29th. I know you just recently came on board here, but earlier this year there was the, the public hearings for the budget. We assumed that it was done there, done that everything was done at that point, but it looks like we're still not at the finish line. After it was introduced, there was amendments that came that had to be sent down to DCA for approval. Because I remember very right clearly after the new administration was sworn in last year, we heard repeatedly throughout the summer and fall that the days of delays with budget were over, that this with this new group in that we were going to have a budget in place. Well, let, let, hold on. let's be very clear. We send our budget down the track, and we did that. We did it in February, March, uh, and the state tells us to do that. The state then reviews it, and they get 500 budgets from 500 municipalities. The state reviewed it, and then they ask us questions. We get them answers. We finally now got the okay to approve. We schedule a public meeting. So it's not that we sat around here until August or September not want to do a budget. We submitted our budget at the exact time. The state then takes months to review it, ask us questions, we give them back documentation. We just got the clear to, to have the public hearing to vote on again. So that's not accurate. Then why do all the other towns around us have their budgets in place, finished by by April of every year? Maybe they get them in before, so maybe they get them in before we get them in. We, we got ours budget, in a couple days late, process. I remember. We got ours in a couple days late, so we were probably last on the list. Maybe they get them in early, and then therefore they get reviewed early. But we are just waiting on the state. It's the same thing every year. That's the same story we've gotten every year. I've been coming to these meetings faithfully. I don't think I've missed more than one or two in ten years. The previous administration said the same thing. We're waiting for state approval. And meanwhile, all the other towns around us seem to have their, their budgets in place on time. They're introduced in January. There's you know, hearings in February. They're ratified and approved in, in March. But every year, it's the same thing. No matter who's sitting up there, we have the same stories. This next year is going to be different and nothing really ever changes. Yes. Let me move on. Uh, as many of you are probably aware, the last uh, couple planning board meetings, I've been raising a point of order about the legality of one of its members. So my question next is a real quick one for Mr. Martino, the Township Attorney. I assume, Mr. Martino, you're already familiar with uh, the objections I've been raising at the last two planning board meetings about one of its Class 4 members also being a Township employee. According to the Municipal Land Use Law Statute 40, colon 55D slash 23, hyphen 23. That is not permissible. I just want to, to ask you. Do you want to read the whole thing out loud to us? Uh, if you want, I've read so many times I've memorized. talks about being a member of the Historic Preservation story. Board is an exception. But in your opinion, I assume you, you consult with Ms. DeVito. Do you share her opinion that there are exceptions to that Municipal Land Use Law Statute, which would allow 
I, I, I act on I act on advice of counsel. Well, I'm asking Mr. Martino in this case, since he is. I, I don't uh, control uh, the zoning board. I have no planning input. Board, I mean, the planning board. board. I have no input to this. I can't tell what the the planning board attorney what to do, and I don't know about your objections and your appearances in the planning board. I know there's an issue because it's been raised here before, and but I don't I don't advise the planning board. I don't advise the planning board what to do. In fact, it's a conflict for me to advise the planning board. So I don't get involved. All right. All right. If it's a conflict, then I it's a conflict. If it isn't yes. a conflict, I was going to ask you to please consult with Mr. Peter because you know, her actions could be putting the planning board and the township at peril, possibly. Because there's I, case law that says the town attorney cannot have anything to do to influence the planning board. We are so, way over my duties, right? Well, well, well you, 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 with all due respect, you gave the gentle lady from Twitten Street nearly 15 minutes. When, when I speak, you, you, you put that clock on five five minutes to make sure. Let me, I'm almost finished. I just have two other quick, quick items to discuss. Since you've become mayor, you've taken, at every opportunity, you've taken cheap shots at the website I produced, saying that, oh, I, I was charging a, a, this hideous amount of $17,000. Five hundred dollars a year. No, I the website was hideous, not the amount. Well, you know what, Mr. Mellon? Let's let me let me bring up the following point. At the end of 2013, Monmouth University, their school of government, reviewed municipal websites for every every municipality in the state. You had been running the township website for ten years. You had ten years of development time. This is your livelihood. I'm, I don't walk around saying that I'm a municipal web designer, but you do. You had ten years, and yet when that school reviewed your work. They rated it as one of the worst, one of the poorest designed websites in That's the not entire true state. At all. They, they rank, I'm, in this all right, I'm going to post rank, it to your Facebook page content. and I have the report so they everyone can see content. and I will refute what you're saying. But also, you, 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 you lambaste me for the amount of money. The, the, the relatively small amount of dollars for that website? If anybody ever saw that website, the fact that we hey, were spending $6,000. Why don't you post what you had in place up to the end of 2014? And by the way, when you took over, you didn't resist taking all the content I developed. And, and moving it to the new version. In fact, when I took over from you, what you had is forms. You had scanned copies. When you got hired. Xerox, Xerox copies of Xerox copies. You didn't even bother to take the time to digitize forms. Way I got to get everything. Need to Tell the community, how much did you charge for website services from 2010 to Back 2014? Then, probably $1,000 or $1,200 a month. But I also have a the staff of eight. I also, how many people do you have in your staff? Where's your office located? I, I, I'm on the you know I'm solo. I'm oh, independent. Okay. So you worked you, out of your house? Of course. Oh, okay. So I wasn't sure you had a barrier to do that, but okay. It's a home so business. So how many employees did you have? How much health care did you I just told you. I told you. I understand. Yeah, but no, you charge more money than I did? Tell I had six employees? How much you charge for website services from 2010 to 2014? But I just said it was about $1,000 a month. The total. The total stuff. amount. Times a thousand times how many months I did it. It was almost $120,000 for that, that five-year period. I have all the invoices. Wow. I'll also be posting those as well in Love. short order. Finally, the last thing. As I'm sure all of you have watched multiple times, Walt Cain did a wonderful report about the, the government energy aggregation program. And to Councilwoman Burke's credit, in February of this year, she tried to do the right thing for the community. She introduced a motion to rescind that ordinance. I'm going to ask her, again tonight in the wake of Mr. Kane's report to once again make that motion to rescind the GEA matter. And this time, as Mr. Kane pointed out, because you got campaign financing from the same entity to recuse yourself from this vote. You have, that leaves then an odd number of council members to vote on this matter. I ask Councilman Burke for you to make that motion again and this time so the chair. hopefully have this rescinded. Thank you. I'll leave it to you. Anybody else? Jean Lombardi, 33, Fairway Avenue. I just want to piggyback what Councilman Graziano said regarding um, our ordinances and existing properties. How, how can we as a township hold a property owner that has a, a deck on the back of their house for the last 40 years to a standard to that? I mean, that's what the issue is. You've got, I mean, at some point, things have to be grandfathered in. Because back when that deck was built, we didn't have these codes. I would love to discuss this if we had a committee that can. I would love to serve on that committee, these, Mayor. We don't have that committee, unfortunately. Can we have that committee? We try. Huh. This council decide not to do that. Okay. So I can only direct your concern then to the manager, who can try and work it out. Yeah, as as a resident, as a realtor, I've experienced it over and over and over. 
you know, we have these elderly people, people they're selling their properties, and they can't because they're hung up on things that have existed forever. So that, that's one issue. Uh, I think the issue is I've worked, I work in 25 municipalities. I've worked for two different construction code departments. Um, I think there's a lot of little things that we can do to help residents out, even help out the staff that's up there. Because if we just, when we gave out a CO, if we just gave people some information on what projects they made, hey, you just bought a house, by the way, make sure you keep your survey handy because if you want it to put a pool and deck a shed or driveway, you're going to need it. We don't communicate that with people. Um, and that also tells them they would need a permit. And then what we could also do is say, if you wind up doing any of this work without getting a permit, when you go to sell your house, your emergency is not our emergency. You're going to go to the back of the list. You might pay a little more for your permit because you did it for all these years without proper inspection. If we can communicate that to people, unfortunately, we do not have the ability to say or recommend to that department because this council has not has decided not to create a committee to do that. So all I can do is agree with your frustrations, give you recommendations that I would give if I was on that committee, but unfortunately, I cannot do that. Our, the bigger issue is the existence. Yes, Mayor Pete Chair. Sure. What happens is, uh, and, that, and that's where I was going, it's not about the present, it's about the past. And I'm not saying past, it could be from 5 years, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. There are residents in Baltimore that have been here, they bought their house over the years. I mean, and there was people in charge prior, okay? Things have been handed down. And now that things are moving, they're being handcuffed. Handcuffed. And, and, and the sales are lost, and, and, the, and those families are strapped. I mean, it's it's just it. And then, and then my, my last thing is because you're almost uh, out of time. Okay. <laughs> I'm almost done. No, you, you have two minutes. Uh, and you get time too, family, by the way. You get time too. I should. Uh, three family house. Yep. Code enforcement says it's legal two family. Tax assessor says it's three family. Owners paying taxes on a three family. How do two departments in the same township have different information, and how is how is that even legal? We, we kind of, I, you must have walked in late, we kind of just hit this topic twice already. That happened to me. My mother, who's sitting in the back, we, we pay taxes on a three-family house. They bought it when she was pregnant with me. So for, I'm 44 now, for 38 years, they pay tax on a three-family. Found out from the construction code it was only two, we had to go for a variance. Yet you never get back the money, by the way, that the extra money you pay. How, it never how, goes the other way. How can the township correct that? Without by sharing data, I think by sharing some data, I think between the construction code and and, and uh, tax assessor, plus what Councilman Graziano was saying, we go out and we reassess houses. So we make a determination if we can't get into the house, we make a determination with the two or three. But then we only use that for the tax reasons. We never communicate that information back. Again, some pretty easy things I think that can be addressed. But uh, I guess I'll direct uh, Mr. Icon to try and. It's hard to do that without a, without a council committee, but anybody else? I'm not going to take long, but I do have to. Uh, good evening, council. Um, I wanted to acknowledge the uh, town manager for the short period of time that you've been here for the positive results we've been seeing this town as a resident a taxpayer for the last 15 years. I see more work done in this town in the short time that you've been here than in the 15 years that I've lived here. So I really want to thank you for that. I want to be acknowledged for the positive results. Um, I've also been approached by residents in the town who have asked me, uh, because they can't make it here, uh, to acknowledge the health department and the DPW for the great results um, that they have been seeing in the town, the responses that they've been getting um, to their concerns. Um, I've been approached several times asking me to please acknowledge them in our meetings. Um, the councilman uh, Graziano talked about uh, the WebEx as a member of the planning board. I would love to be on that WebEx. I'd like to hear about this. I've actually requested that I get soft copies now of my information, no longer all these packets paperwork, um, so I would really be possibly be interested in attending one of those. Uh, I'm also glad to hear that we're going green. I think that part of that should also be uh, the bike lanes on Washington Avenue. I've seen a lot of people, cyclists, probably going to work, not just your regular bike riders, but cyclists, 
trying to navigate through Washington Avenue with the cars on there. Um, scooters. I see people with scooters. Um, powered skateboards as well. Trying to navigate through Washington Avenue. Almost getting killed. I think recently there was a little girl that almost got run over by a car. The thing that I ask is if they are put in that uh, there is enforcement and constant enforcement of double parked illegal vehicles on these lanes. They should not be there. Um, they should be enforced, um, whatever that takes, because the cyclists have a right to the roads just as much as cars do. And so uh, I think if they are uh, installed, they should be enforced. And then also I've had residents on Cedar Hill Avenue. As we know that road at one particular time was a one-way. It was recently changed to a two-way. Um, they're complaining about a lot of people speeding and accidents on that block. They've asked me to ask at the meeting if enforcement can be done um, on that street to curtail the uh, speeding uh, on that block. Can they that, that note sign on that address? Um, and that's, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Motion. Motion. Motion to close public comment. The second. Motion made and second to close public comment. Sort of call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Jim Wilberg? Yes. Mayor Bellin? Yes. Uh, where are we now? Resolutions. Mm -hmm. Motion for the consent agenda. Depends. We got some. Yes, I need uh, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> eight, nine, ten. Anybody else? No. So we're gonna pull the. We're gonna pass the. We're gonna go for the consent for the removal of eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ready? You need a motion? Okay. You have a motion. Councilmember Calzarelli? Yes. Tapena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Jim Lilbert? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Can you do 8, 9, 10 together if you like? Sure. Motion. Can we make a motion to do 8, 9, 10? Second. Motion made and second. Put call roll. Councilmember Calzarelli? Yes. Tapena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Jim Lilbert? Yes. Mayor Melman? Abstain. Uh, new business? I have a new business. Yeah. One item. I have something in the new business. I would like to answer uh, Mr. Sheldon. Yes, I did. Um, I make the motion to rescind the ordinance. Because I, I feel that the people should, you know, do what they want with their own public service bills. But I just recently found out that the council is not doing this anymore. So. The yeah, yes. Yes. That's it. Well, let's just be clear. We, we, we voted on the program. Yeah. The program went forward as expected. One of those things was the auction. We held the auction before any of the news came out. We were not happy with the auction price because we were anticipating a double digit savings. We got an 8% savings. Therefore, it's not double digits. We're either going to, we're definitely not acting on this price. We may go out one day in the future again. We may decide not to go well, forward again. Future, but right. right now, we're not acting. Exactly. Right. Okay, that's all I'm interested in. I just want to be clear because yeah, that's going to get misinterpreted clear. how you said that. Yeah, I'm clear. Anybody else? No? Motion closed? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>
North gets the uh, uh, Nutley portion, I think, of Nutley gets Small the water. Portion of Nutley gets yeah. the water. Uh, so we're not alone in this, and, and my questions remain. You know, I hear a lot of stuff that they're doing for North properties, but I don't necessarily hear what's happening for Bevel. Uh, I was on hand in the wintertime, Councilwoman, you may remember this, where because Silver Lake is serviced directly by NORC, yes, so much so that they pay directly to the NORC Water Department, yes. we got NORC to give us filters for anybody that wanted them there. And we were on hand to hand them out, actually. Uh, that's a little different situation because Silver Lake is actually on NORC's infrastructure. Uh, this is a lead issue predominantly based on service lines. Uh, and that's the, the two takeaways. And the last takeaway would be we are getting our water before it's getting to NORC. If you have a copper line and you know you have a copper line, you really don't have any issues at this point. Uh, the, 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 but the other good news is this, this change to this orthophosphate. I can see, we, I, I held off on the lead samples as late as I could to give a chance for this ortho to work. So, as I said, there were, you know, the, over half of the samples we took were single digits, not near, even near the 15. So I, I, I was kind of surprised that the DEP and the EPA jumped on Newark before this new treatment even had a chance to really operate. Well, they're covering, yeah. they're covering it. But the, uh, so we're, we're also testing what they call water quality parameters, and we're, we're, uh, we're sampling uh, 40 samples a month to see, to make sure that that orthophosphate's getting into the lines, and you can see the num they're increasing the dosage slowly, and you can see the numbers going up, so the orthophosphate is... And I, I've learned water. far too much about this in the last couple of days, so the, you have a, a pipe, it's lead, so they treat the water with this orthophosphate, and that treatment of the water basically coats the pipe, and a lot, it, it's, its goal is to stop the lead from leaching into the water. Uh, they've been finding that their previous treatment broke down. It was broke breaking down. down, and you know that because we're now forced, or, or they're now forced to test the water so often. So once they realize that, they've been changing. That change, according to our town engineer, has been yielding some success now. Yeah, I mean, I, I even talked to the Bloomfield operator. He sees the number, his numbers. Plus, we have also done our part to flush. I remember like we were flushing. We're starting to flush again. Right. Because the more you keep the water running, the less it sits there, the better off you are. So we've been flushing. I remember a few months ago we flushed a lot. Yeah, we're going to start again. Yeah. You know, the other talking about the other item we put out was a disinfection byproduct. I got good news from uh, Newark today. They did some samples up at the reservoir, and the numbers are at or just below for the two items that we test: halocytic acids and uh, trihaleal methanes. They are at or below or, or close to the, uh, the, and that's the, the, the MCL. That's, I can never say that. The dis disinfection byproducts. And even that, when that was ticking up a little high, and, and so for those of you who are listening, when you get that mailer from us uh, that you know, the double water violates federal standards, that's what we're talking about now. And even though it ticked up just above where the point was we had a report, the if you read that document that we send out, it basically says, what are the health risks? There are no short-term health risks. So not talking about the lead issue now, the, the disinfected byproduct issue. There are no short-term health risks. This is right in the letter that we mail out. To have long-term health risks, a person would have to drink 64 ounces of water, which is eight, eight ounces of glasses, every single day for 70 years to have a one in a million chance of having the possible adverse health effects from it. So, it, you know, we're not really talking about a serious, serious, serious right. issue here. Newark, Newark, we have to notice about it. Newark was, what they before they would treat the water, they could, what they, was happening, they're pre-coronating it, and they treat it, and then they coronate it again. Exactly. So, this affects the byproducts or a product of chlorine in your water. And uh, so now they're, they're using a the permanganate to pre-treat it and we are seeing success. So we're, we're, we're sampling. I, I, I told the schools we'd sample their water for lead also, and we're going to check our, our the interconnections. And uh, we, this month we do the disinfection byproducts, so we'll see where we're at. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of this too now. Um, a lot of people have been calling me and they're a little worried about this lead. Mm -hmm. right. so. it, 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 the simplest solution that I was talking to the you know, Newark, uh, Newark was forced to get to get out water, which, by the way, was expired water. <laughs> but uh, it was on the, that was on the news too. But uh, 
The, they didn't uh, mention that in the five o'clock call. No, but, it was, <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, I think the easiest solution is to flush the water. You know, follow the, the DEP guidelines. Flush your water for a few minutes before you. The first and thing by the, as we talked about this today, by default that happens without you do. If you wake, if you take a shower in the morning. You've just this, you've just rinsed the line out, so it's, it, it happens by default a lot. Yeah, as long as you don't drink in the shower water, you're right. you're all set. Okay, we're good. And if you have any questions, okay, give me a call. Go, we'll we'll I, I, I email them all the time. Oh, okay. so, anything else, Mayor? No, I think okay. we're good. We can Thank release. Uh, we're going to move on. So we're up to item number six: is the approval of minutes. None at this time, Mayor. We have no minutes to approve. Report of the manager. Just speak. I can just remind you, Anthony, to speak loudly. Yes, sir. And project. Absolutely. Channel your son. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we had a very busy um, month this past month, meeting only once. Um, hopefully, some of you have noticed our new jet vac. It's the very large truck. It has like a big drum at the, um, um, the shape of the truck is a drum. This is the truck. This is the truck that uh, vacuums the catch basins and the sewers in the town. For the last year, our truck has been out of service, and we were actually operating on uh, just a, a promise and a wish from Bloomfield and, and Nutley. They were allowing us to use their truck when they weren't using it. Um, but I can tell you, I, I went back and looked, and just in like a three, or, a two or three month period, we had to spend nine thousand dollars when. The Nutley truck and the Bloomfield truck wasn't available, and um, now obviously having this truck, we're we're doing catch basins on a routine basis. So that's going to hope eliminate some of the uh, backups that happen, uh, you know, occasionally when there's a heavy rain. So it was a, it was you know pretty good, exciting news to have our jet, our own jet back back. Um, Ruckus Street again. This was a nuisance and a street that needed to be done. We were very fortunate that the county and now even the state are stepping in. So uh, work on Ruckus Street uh, began uh, this week. We were just recently accepted into the Clean, en Clean Energy Program and the uh, Town of Belleville for Public Buildings will be receiving $15,000 uh, worth of LED light bulbs. So every fluorescent bulb that you see in public buildings, fire houses, uh, obviously town hall as well, are going to be replaced with LEDs. Um, these cost, because we were accepted into the program from the Heat Clean Energy Program, this is at zero cost to the community. And what's great about it is that we don't, we don't even have to install them. They actually send somebody in to install the lights, so there's no manpower there. And then, like on a typical fluorescent light, may have to be changed based on the amount of hours once a year. These LEDs have three times the lifetime, so that's again we'll be reducing the manpower levels. So that's pretty exciting. The mayor and I had an opportunity to sit down with the Economic Development Authority. They have allocated 1.4 million dollars on Washington Avenue from Greylock uh, to the border of Nutley, and that 1.4. It's Overlook, actually. I'm sorry. I think it's Overlook. Overlook. I'm sorry. 1.4, and that, that money is going to be spent on it's a, a street state project, which will include the majority of that money is going to go to new street lighting. Um, then there's going to be some signage and some additional uh, curbing work. We're also working with the DOT to put in the infamous uh, bus lanes. But again, this is an additional 1.4 million dollars bike lanes. Did I say bus? Bike lanes. 1.4 million dollars that has that has nothing to do with the DOT money. So this is an additional 1.4 million dollars that the town of Belleville will be receiving. Starting next week, our DOT uh, street program, which is uh, 1.1 million dollars from DOT, uh, Belmont, Cottage, Homes, Overlook, Senate, and Smith, will all be repaid during the months of September. October and maybe into the beginning of November. But all those streets are going to be paid this year before the end of the year. Uh, moving right along, we have uh, Five met, is almost up. What's that? We met with uh, Tara Moss Medical Center. As you know, uh, some of the previous meetings, some of the residents in that area were complaining that the nurses and, and some of the employees from the hospital were parking on the street. We met with the executive team there. They assured us that they were going to uh, put out an extended effort to they, they do not charge 
They so do not charge on their levels four, uh, four or five. Just the employees didn't want to park on top. They didn't want to park on four or five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, now being told to park. That was the, yeah. Uh, continuing, continuing. Our recreation department just completed its summer camp program. We had over 400 um, uh, children that attended um, summer camp this, this summer. We had our second movie night, a great success. Our recreation department is also announcing that we are going to be ready in September to offer the uh, pre-K program. And also, uh, in October, we'll also be offering the arts and craft drama uh, opportunity that we tried out for the first time last year. We got some great feedback, and we will be trying it for a second time. Councilman Latoria and I, I certainly don't want to uh, steal his thunder because he put a lot of work into this. We met with the representatives who run the Nutley Drama Club, and this is going to be our first year where we're going to offer a drama workshop in the fall, and hopefully in early spring we are going to announce the first production band, and uh, it's going to be the first drama show. So we're just about uh, finalizing some of those plans to announce that. I don't want to steal Councilwoman uh, Council Burke's thunder, but... Uh, just a party is right around the corner. I know she has been working tirelessly. Uh, it's you know usually one of the best sites in, in Belleville. And again, thank you, Councilwoman Burke, for that. Uh, fire department. Since the last time we met, we had two uh, house fires. Both fires uh, had uh, some property damage. But again, when you take a look at how close some of our homes are, uh, our fire department is doing a excellent job. And we had two, two, two house fires with two great stops. Saved the police department for less. Uh, and certainly the reason why I saved it for less is because Deputy Chief Carver was here. If I forget anything or if you want to jump in, this is the perfect time to jump in. But they have, the police department has really put, uh, has taken community police into another level. In the month of July, they were out in the Silver Lake neighborhood, Franklin Street. They were not only cleaning up, uh, working along hand in hand with public works, cleaning up trash, graffiti. They um, have uh, had great involvement with the business community. Their presence was felt, and they took it to another level. Not only were they working with the business community in that neighborhood and on that street, then they started working with the youth. They had barbecues, bike races. Um, so it was just you know community policing at its best. Then we go into from um, the community policing. We had National Night Out last Tuesday. Again, it was fun to participate in that and our police presence around town was uh, very uh, obviously uh, appreciated by the residents. And probably most important, um, you probably heard that we did have an officer hit by a car last month. Officer Holland is uh, just about ready to come back to work. He recovered, so he's fine, and, and that's most important. So the police officer that was uh, injured uh, is, is fine, coming back to work, and that's great news. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions for the manager based on his uh, report? Not on his report. That's something I want to start. All right, we're, we're, we're doing committee reports, so yeah. take it when, when you get in the Okay. Uh, this is the first meeting of the month, so we always do our committee reports, so anybody that's got anything to say uh, can go. So quickly, uh, I'm not going to rehash a lot of the stuff that the manager said, um, so we're going to report to the mayor now. Uh, as you kind of heard, that uh, Rucker Street is beginning. Uh, that kind of was initiated from a, a meeting that I had with the county executive about a month ago, where he heard uh, our plea that the intersection at Maine and Rutgers was horrendous and the state was not paying any attention to it. He agreed right then and there, we're not going to stop at the intersection, we're going to do it. Um, we had a press conference, we had a whole thing, it was all great. I guess the state got jealous and the state then called up and said, no, 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 we're going to do it now. So you will see Rucker Street beginning by the county, uh, and we have a meeting on Tuesday to sign some documents with the state, and the state's going to actually wind up doing that intersection. Uh, as you heard from the manager, uh, we did have an unfortunate accident, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, an unfortunate uh, incident last week uh, with, a, with a, a violent crime of sorts. Uh, that we, My office has been in constant contact with that victim and his family. He's doing well. Uh, we communicated today with them. He's taking steps. So it looks like he's going to be coming out of this thing slowly but surely. But I just want to re reiterate to people, uh, it's important to know, um, we, we really should be locking our doors. You know, 
uh, and just be vigilant. It's, uh, it's just a different world out there today. It has nothing to do with Belleville, it has nothing to do with who we border or why we border them. It has nothing to do with that. It's just a different world out there today. And we really need to just be vigilant, be careful when you're taking your groceries in from your car. Uh, make sure you lock your doors. Two of the incidents last week with stolen cars were literally the perpetrators who walked into the person's house and most women leave their pocketbook on the kitchen table and they know to go to the kitchen and they just take the keys and go. Uh, both stolen cars last week were that. Uh, they just walked into the house. So we have to lock our doors. Just please make sure that you lock our doors. And Something I learned actually from one of our community policing meetings uh, last summer. Uh, I have a garage clicker and I always kept it in my car. Hit the button, go in. And I didn't realize that until I heard one of our officers say that at a, at a public meeting that well, if they break into your car, take your clicker, they can get in your house. Uh, so I take that clicker in. So just be vigilant is the only thing I can say. Uh, Washington Avenue moving on. Washington Avenue has been looking great. PBW has been doing a great job. Not only are we instituting the walking of Washington Avenue and cleaning it up, uh, physically doing it, uh, but we've been dealing with the garbage contractor to make sure these garbage pails are updated or emptied more frequently. Uh, Anthony's sick of getting photos from me on a Saturday morning of overflowing garbage cans on Washington Avenue. And uh, also, as we touched on during the work session portion, the new stands. Uh, looks great not having those graffiti covered boxes all, all over the place. A water issue, I already talked about it. You heard me talk about that. We do have another call with the state tomorrow. I have a 5 o'clock conference call today with the governor's office. Uh, we should have more of an update for you in the next day or so. Uh, something that's unfortunate, and if you were here at any point last week in this building, you would have seen me yelling and screaming for days uh, because we mailed out our recycling calendar. And uh, it was actually a newsletter slash recycling garbage calendar. And uh, it had a mistake in it. And uh, if you know me, and you know my attention to detail, and you know uh, uh, how I can be a control freak at times, and I didn't have anything to do necessarily with the design of this project or the implementation of the content, uh, but I do remember repeatedly asking the manager to make sure that he got on his department heads to make sure that it was approved. And I never accepted that first time. And I you know, had him do it three or four times. And to say that it's frustrating is an understatement. To say it's embarrassing is an understatement. I'm embarrassed by it. I will say that just for those of you who are concerned about it, I think finally we put up a post today about that, but nothing has changed in the recycling schedule. So whatever you were doing, keep doing it. The digital versions that we did put out there on the website and the digital versions we did put on social media were correct. Um, so for whatever that's worth, and we're still looking at some different, same garbage, same recycling, nothing has changed in the schedule. And we're looking at uh, some mechanisms to make that, correct that mistake potentially. Uh, but again, it's embarrassing. Um, you know, you got one job to do, it's get a recycling schedule right. We, we, we should have been able to get that right. Um, we have posted, speaking of our website and social media, our police department is open, is having an open recruitment uh, for entry level police officers. That application has to be in by August 31st. A uh, couple things we have upcoming. We have a uh, Ecuadorian flag raising this coming Friday. More details are, are out there, I believe, on our, on our website and social media channels. On September 6th, I say this because it comes before our next council meeting, we have a Brazilian flag raising. I believe that might be the first time we're ever doing a Brazilian flag raising, uh, so we're doing one of those. Our shredding day is coming up, November, I'm sorry, September 7th. Uh, obviously, our 9-11 ceremony is September 11th, and of course, our great Just the Party is on uh, Wednesday, September 12th. And we had our first ever 5K meeting. Uh, that seems to be going well. We're looking at even improving it uh, from last year. We had nearly 200 runners. We're looking to hit maybe 300, 350. And again, proceeds from that uh, do a bunch of things. They offset the cost of the, of the parade the next day, but we're also able to directly benefit some of the our four veterans organizations and offer a scholarship. Um, I did see uh, the recipient of our scholarship. Uh, she posted something recently, and she's at the U.S. Naval Academy. Uh, it's just great, great to see. She just graduated uh, high school um, this past June. Uh, that's it. So we're going to go real quick for some committee reports. Uh, Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? No, no, not at this time. Councilwoman? I will mention to you, Councilwoman, only because I sit on the library board. Uh, this year the library board is interested in, uh, or they already booked, I believe, some kind of entertainment for Hispanic Heritage Month. So we might want to jump on that rather than do our own thing that we did last year. So if you want to yes. dig, dig into that. Uh, Councilman. Yes, as Mr. Iacono said, we did meet with um, uh, 
with James Miles and his wife Abby, and James will direct the, um, the play, his wife will produce it, they bring in their own team. Uh, we will have drama classes this fall starting in September. We will not have classes in the winter because in January we will have uh, casting for the production. They're actually leaning towards Anthony Craig. They were leaning towards the show Annie right. because there's a lot of girls in that uh, production and more girls tend to try out the boys at that age. But this is for, um, there are also parts for boys though. Um, this is also uh, for, this is for elementary school and middle school. Uh, Mr. Iacone was going to, uh, and Anthony, please let me know, you know what happened to you. He's going to reach out to Dr. Tomko as far as we were talking about, I think, a March. Was yes, it March? Just to confirm that there was no conflict in the case, and he yeah. needed to double check that the was fine. Uh, he was going to check to see if there was no conflict in dates, so we could use the um, auditorium for the uh, show. I think it's three nights, two nights and a matinee. And what did we talk about rehearsing? Was it the Friendly House, uh, uh, Anthony? A combination of the Friendly House and High School. And a combination. I think the High School toward the end as they get closer to production. There is a budget for this, um, which they are going to submit. But as Mr. Iacone said, we could raise money for this with the air journals and, of course, the sales of the um, tickets. So this is the first. I mean, not, it's a junior production. So a junior production is about an hour. There will be an intermission. With, so they can, you know, uh, make some money again in sales of flowers and candy. And as far as orchestra, what they do is they pipe in music, what they do for the junior productions. Another thing that we needed, though, Mr. Iacone, we talked about that, we needed a liaison from the town, the town employee, actually, to work with uh, Mr. Miles and his uh, wife. We did talk about that. Right, so, we had a good meeting. Absolutely. Right, so that's where we are right now. So it should really be good, I hope. Councilwoman? Just the party, a little hype maybe? Hmm. <laughs> all, all because we don't have another meeting before. How long for then? Well, for 15 oh, yeah, we years yeah. we've run the, the temp. Oh, we, we, we moved it to the Monday. But we're doing it on Tuesday. Yeah. No. Party's on Thursday. We have a meeting oh, on Tuesday. I, well, well, you can plug it anyway. Why not? <laughs> I, I was thinking the planning board meeting. Up. Oh, okay. Monday. I'm saying for 15 years, uh, we've had just the party, and it gets bigger and better as things go by. and. I think we're going to have really even more people, and um, it's something that the whole town could just get involved in. We have beautiful music coming and a lot of other things. So, and we make and we and we make some money on it too. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. So, everybody, please, if you have never been to just a party, try it one evening. Thank you. Councilman, you have. Yeah, this is not the committee. This is something that I want to ask Anthony to look into, but share it with you all if you. Think. So, uh, Anthony, uh, being on the council for a year at least and being in town for my whole life, uh, more and more questions come about. And it comes about with elderly, right? It's anybody who lived in a town for 25 or 30 years or more, okay? And with the influx now of Belleville moving forward, houses being sold, people moving in, uh, I think there's a, uh, how do I say it? I think there's a breakdown in the process, right? So. People that have been willed a home or things that have been here for 30, 40 years, when it comes time to sell, right, there seems to be some type of probably concern, not probably, there are concerns of what you need, what you have done, what you haven't done, right, wrong or indifferent. But that being said, uh, for the time, the complaints I'm getting from the times, these people have been getting tax left, right, and center from that time. And is there a process? I know we get, uh, uh, I know every 10 years we look at uh, reassessment, right? So is there anything that we can put together or look at to where when they reassess maybe the, 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 the parties to be or the people on site in the town go back and say, hey, instead of waiting for 30, 40 years, to get kiboshed or ruin a sale or something of that nature, how can we fill that gap for those that really didn't know what happened? You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if there's something that can be done because this is a cry out that I hear from a lot of people from years ago. Okay, so I, I'm just trying to, how do we help it going forward? Just thought, you know, I don't know how we work this, but Something I didn't think needs to be addressed because those people really have, they have nothing, where they may not, they may have something or nothing, 
but they may not have paperwork, it may not be here, things have happened in the past, forget the past, it's just a process that I think, or gaps that need to be filled, so things can move forward in, in, a, manly, in a manly way. Expedite it, you know what I mean? Not even expedite it in a nice process flow. I could certainly sit down with the council just to see if we could create something, so, so, some type of review. And I think I, I heard, I mean, back when I was in the council 18 years ago, we, it, it was often where somebody bought a house and bought it as a three family, and bought it, got a CEO three family, go to sell it and find out, no, it's only a two. I think, I think the sharing of data, yeah, that's, that's what That's what I'm about. trying to go to because it, it, it's, it's, it's more and more and more and more that's happening. I, I, I'll give you even a better example. Even now, from what I understand, in construction code, when we issue or we get a realtor or a homeowner selling their house and they call up, we ask them, well, is it a one family, two family, three? We say one, two, or three. We then call downstairs to the tax assessor to confirm that. that I don't know why we, we have to do that step. The data should be right. connected somehow. If You know what? If we had a, 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 a committee to review some of these things, it would actually be a good idea. I, I'll sign up. <laughs> would, would that be a good idea? I'll sign up, yeah. You know, Ben, what do you think? Yeah, he's, he could do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be All right, Ann, do you have your hands around with that? Yeah. May or may not entail? Okay. Where are we going off next? We're going off to communications. Any requests received from Franklin Shield Doxus for permission to conduct their annual? No. Michael Ross Common House Breast Cancer 5K on Saturday, October 19th. <laughs> I ran it last year. So mm -hmm. Do we have to review yes. these or yes, motion? Do. Motion to my <laughs> motion. Motion made. Thank you. Call roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Depenia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notori. Yes. Strumlober. Yes. Mayor Mellon. Yes. We request received from Hewitt Avenue residents for permission to conduct a block party on Saturday, September 1st from 12 to 8 p.m. Any motion? Yes. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made. Second clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cosarelli. Yes. Depenia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notori. Yes. Strumlo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melvin. Yes. Communication number uh, letter C. Request received from Second Baptist Church for permission to conduct its church anniversary annual outreach barbecue on Saturday, September 7th, on Academy Street and Stephen Street, from 12 noon to 6 p.m. An invitation to attend is extended to the members of the municipal council, law enforcement, and or safety personnel. Motion. Motion. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Petania. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Latore. Yes. Schumacher. Yes. Mayor Melvin. Yes. Next up, ordinances for introduction. Ordinance number one for introduction and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the township of Belleville, chapter. 8-8 designated loading zones. In a motion? Uh, second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Tenya? Yes. Tenya? Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Strumlo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number two for introduction and ordinance to amend chapter 3.5 of the revised <coughs> ordinances of the Township of Belleville entitled Noise Control. Make a motion. Second. second. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Latore? Yes. Strimolo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number three for introduction and ordinance to amend chapter 2.25 of the revised general ordinances to the Township of Double entitled Payment of Medical Benefit Premiums for Employees of the Township of Double Who Have Retired. Motion. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Strumlo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Is there a fourth item now? There is a fourth ordinance for introduction. Ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the Township of Delvin, New Jersey, or payment of principal and interest on capital equipment lease revenue bonds, series 2019, Delvin Board of Education project of the Essex County Improvement Authority. Motion. We have a motion. Second. I have a motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Depenia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Satori. Yes. Strumlo Burke. Yes. Mayor Mellon. Yes. Ordinance for public hearing, second and final reading. Ordinance number one for public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8 2C, Residential Parking Permit Area. 
get a motion to open. I'll motion. make a motion. Second. We have a motion made and second to open for public hearing. For call off. Councilmember Cozzarelli? Yes. Defania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Jumalo Burke? Yes. Mayor Milham? Yes. Anytime we change a salary, whether it's to increase it because of the contract negotiation or a new title or something like that, we have to amend the salary ordinance to do that. Uh, we don't pay people, we pay titles here, and we put people in titles. This one is actually, you, you don't often see this, but this one's actually a reduction. So um, our chief judge retired, uh, and it's public record what the salaries are, they're, they're, they're part of our laws. So when that chief judge retired, it was $102,000 a year salary. We have decided to reduce that to $80,000. So we've just saved the residents of level twenty thousand dollars by making that move. That's it. That's a reduction in one one one, one title. And as you heard our caucus today, we can discuss maybe next meeting the deleting some of the board of board attorneys and saving that money. You'll we'll see the same thing for that. Motion to close. Motion to close. Second, Second. final adoption. Second. Motion made to close and move for final. Councilmember Cosarelli. Yes. Defendia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notari. Yes. Jumalo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melhem. Yes. Ordinance is approved. Ordinance number three for public.